Mike Costello, and I'm here with Dr. Iris Freelander, and today we'd like to talk to you about one presence, one power, one solution. And of course, that one presence, power, and solution is the presence and power of God, and the universal power and presence that sustains us and undergirds us. That universal concept of the presence and power of God is fundamental to what we teach and believe, isn't it, Iris? Yes, it is. And we think of one presence, but that presence comes is within each person as well as being God the whole, creator God. And uh, it's, um, it's a wonderful thing to be able to realize that we have that power and presence of God within us. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we have the power, and therefore, the solution is within us. We just have to look um, deeply, and we see the solution every time, don't we? We do. And uh, just at the core of this teaching and concept, both from a, ph a philosophical standpoint and a spiritual standpoint, metaphysics, which is what we teach, teaches us that there, that divine mind or divine intelligence, as we name it, or God, as people are accustomed to saying, that God is, of course, uh, all-knowing, and that is universally accepted. Mm -hmm. And so if God is all-knowing, and if we are able to connect our conscious mind with divine mind or our heart with divine heart, if we connect ourselves with the presence and power of God, and of course, it's not something that we have to go out and seek, because of course, <laughs> we believe that that presence is already within everyone. Now, a lot of people work very hard to uh, to prove that it's not there, or a lot of people ignore the presence and the power which dwells within all of us, but that connection does open the way so that we will be guided and directed always in the way that we should go, the things that we should say, and the way that we should act. And so that solution to every one of life's problems or perplexities, every one of life's uh, experiences, and as a matter of fact, the solution to everything in life has to do with our walking in divine awareness and knowledge. And I think at the beginning now, as we enter into this program, one of the things that we do want to point out is that certainly a lot of people who watch us understand that we teach uh, uh, metaphysical philosophy, new thought philosophy, and which is spiritual, but it also is a philosophical approach that applies universally. And we're not talking about uh, trying to change people's way of, of thinking or their faith, but we are talking about the fact that there is this reality and, the, and that there are universal laws that transcend all of the faith traditions, and that's an important thing for people to understand. Also, a lot of people who are watching or listening may be religious or spiritual, uh, but others listen for the psychological and the philosophical approach, and others are agnostic or atheists, <laughs> and, and even those who don't believe in this power are able to access it because it's it's it is universally present isn't yeah. that true and i think you know so often in the west especially in traditional religions we believe that well if somebody doesn't believe that god just kind of leaves them out of out of life and that there's no connection but of course we know that the divine presence connects with every one of us and so even if a person is not particularly interested in spiritual or religious uh, teachings, the accessibility of this universal intelligence or this divine intelligence is always accessible and available to them. Yes, always, without fail. Mm -hmm. And some say, well, it's a wonderful thing to be home, to be able to go home to God at any moment. And indeed it is. And we do that through meditation more fully in, uh, while we're living on earth. And uh, we can go home to God in our meditations and get answers to our questions. And there's so many different types of meditation that um, it's not just one thing. We can be silent and uh, prayerful and uh, pr filled with praise, or we can just be and just be a part of that divine energy, or we can ask questions and get answers. And I've seen it happen over and over in such a wonderful way, and I know that you have too, where People in their meditation have needed answers, and, and the answer is forthcoming. And the answer, of course, is always there. The universe supplies whatever we need. We just have to be open enough to it to be receptive, mm -hmm. or receptive enough to it to be open, as the case may be. But as we do that, uh, we're living in the light, and we're living from our higher aspect of our own beinghood, and we're living with great joy. And, uh, and we don't allow the earthly things to weight us down. And that's such a 
magnificent way to live, isn't it? It is. It's an empowering way to live, yeah. and it's an effortless way to live. You know, so often we believe that we have to learn something. You know, we have to learn these uh, laws, these spiritual or physical laws, and that we have to do something, or that we have to behave in a certain way in order to access uh, uh, a blessing or, or presence and the power of God. But the fact is that that presence or power is always accessible and available to us. You've spent a lot of your life uh, working with meditation and, yes. and doing a lot of counseling as well, but meditation is really, uh, as you said a few moments ago, the, one of the greatest vehicles for connecting with the presence and the power of, of universal intelligence. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think meditation is one of those things, and we talk a lot about meditation on this program for good reason, because I think it's probably one of the, if not the m most uh, valuable thing that we've shared with our mm -hmm. viewers. And Meditation is one of those things I, I, I find that people have an idea that this is the prescribed way, that if you're going to meditate, you need to do this, <laughs> take your shoes off, sit in a lotus position, do a few alms, do a little chant. I mean, we're, we're very accustomed to people telling us how to do things, but meditation can be approached in a myriad of ways, and, and there is no right or wrong, is there? That's correct, and also it can be done at any moment, and it can be done in just a moment. We can just have our consciousness, and I've heard you say that many times in your lectures, that uh, our consciousness can just go out and up to God and, uh, just for a second, mm -hmm. and we, we are aligning ourselves with divine presence. And when we do that, we, uh, we are getting answers to our questions, and we're seeing life in a different light. And we're not allowing the negativities of life to reach us because we've lifted our consciousness. And everything is consciousness, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So as everything is consciousness and we lift our consciousness to the light, then we're living in the light. And that's such a wonderful thing. And so many people don't realize they can do that. And many people live that way and don't realize that that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, if I can encourage our listeners in any way, it's to know the power of their own mind, know the power that lies within them, because a part of God resides within every person. And it's up to each individual to let that light manifest or not. And this is why children are so precious and light-filled and smile and, and are so happy, because they're totally unconscious of anything but their connection with the with divinity and so and it's just such a wonderful thing to see a child smile when they're just open and receptive right and isn't it interesting the child doesn't have to go to church yeah. every sunday and and, <laughs> and and kneel and pray for for or do things or your child doesn't yeah. need to kneel. and so we have an idea that we need to do yeah. these pious things yeah. in order to uh, to practice the presence and to claim the oneness. But in fact, we don't have to do anything, do we? All we have to do is to open ourselves to its reality and allow it to inflow us and to outflow through us. We you were talking a minute ago, you were talking a minute ago about how I have lectured and taught a, a long time about the power of meditation mm -hmm. in the moment. And in any situation, as I do a lot of, of counseling and I also do a lot of, of work in the business world, I so often will sit in a conference room and the discussions are going in totally <laughs> wrong directions or there's a lot of conflict or strife or in a counseling session where there's just tremendous strife and tension and of course there are clinical ways that we can move but I always find that it's much more successful in those experiences to simply as Hattie Garlish who was the founders of this fellowship used to teach us put our minds in neutral mm -hmm. and let ourselves be guided and directed in the way that we should go so don't worry about what you've been taught don't worry <laughs> about what the clinical aspect of anything is don't worry about what the theology of it is or the teaching. Instead, just enter into the presence and the power and allow that one source, allow that one reality, that one presence to bring about the solution. And don't try to do it yourself. And in, invariably, the, the guidance and the direction comes. And I have learned in my life one thing very clearly, and that is that, that there is a God and I'm not God. <laughs> and that if God can come through me, if the divine can come through me, that then the the right thing is going to come from myself which is going to be the response that i need to have and it goes to the heart of this pro of mm -hmm. the program we were just talking before the program with uh, some of the people here about the fact that we don't do a lot of preparation mm -hmm. we could do a lot of preparation for this program but instead mm -hmm. we open ourselves to what is whatever is going to come in the discussion that's going to be what you need and what i mm -hmm. need and what our viewers need mm -hmm. we may have broad ideas and concepts but we don't need to prepare for life so 
as much as we do. And we don't need to worry so much about uh, how it is we're going to do the things that we're going to do. We just need to know that we can do them. And then we need to get out of the way and allow this presence and the source uh, and this divine uh, reality to bring about the life that we need to have, just as a child does. A child is trusting. A child accepts the fact that the universe and the presence and the power of God is going to provide for them. And in many cases, children don't even have a conscious awareness of that, of that divine presence. And that goes to the heart of what we were talking about at the beginning of the program. We don't even have to understand it. We don't have to believe it. It's a little bit like internal combustion. As I've said so many times, I'm not a scientific person. I have no idea what makes a car go. But I know if I put the key in and I have gas in it and I turn the key on, it's going to go. And quite frankly, that's all I need to know. No, because of the fact that I know that there is a scientific principle behind the reality of internal combustion. Whether I know it or not doesn't determine whether I can access it. I can access it. I don't understand aerodynamics, but I have no problem getting on an airplane. And so that's the way life is. We need to stop worrying about understanding these concepts and ideas. We need to stop worrying about learning them. And we need to just get into the business and get busy about the activity of living our daily lives and accepting the fact that there is that one presence, one power, and one solution and that oneness, that one source is going to guide us and direct us and meet our every need. And then life becomes effortless. That's a very powerful truth. And when you were talking about your business meetings, well, what you're doing is what you said God does for us. We, if, we're, if we step aside and allow God to work through us, he works through us. So you, as um, a chairman of your meeting, you step aside and let everyone say whatever they have to say until they worry through to truth. Mm -hmm. And then and the, the, they either do or they don't. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't matter a great deal what you said. So you just allow them to do whatever it is they need to do to do that. And then about children, children are as open and free as the adults around them allow them to be. And sometimes they're, they're so restricted, children are so restricted, don't do this and don't do that. And parents might or caretakers might say, well, we have to protect them so they'll be safe. Well, you can protect your environment. You can childproof the environment. But children need to be able to be free and to be expressive. And it's a wonderful thing to see these children play in such a lovely, free, open way. But it's so sad to see children who have been restricted to the point that they can't um, be themselves and express the, the love and joy within them. Mm -hmm. Well, with children, we see so often the same thing that happens with adults, but mm -hmm. it happens especially with children, that we tell them what they can't do, mm -hmm. and we begin to make them believe that they can't. That they can't. And we take away their sense of self and their sense of wonder and their sense of expectation and their sense of joy and spontaneity. All of those things go. And as they go, as we peel those away, then the child becomes more like you and me. <laughs> and, and that's the problem. And so if we could, if we could be more childlike, mm -hmm. and of course scripture tells us, but we also know that logic tells us mm -hmm. that if we can be more childlike, if we can be trusting, if we can be happy, if mm -hmm. we can be connected, if we can trust our environment, and unfortunately in today's environment, there are many children who can't trust their environment. Mm -hmm. And that's sad. Mm -hmm. But if they're in that situation, and, and one of the things that I'm thinking of now is in our counseling work and, and uh, as we deal with people, so many of us are damaged in our youth. And of course, many people are damaged in their youth. And many people are damaged in their early life and are damaged in their relationships. And so often that becomes a crutch <laughs> and for why I'm the way I am. I'm the way I am because of my childhood, because of my mother, because of my father, because of my first wife or my first husband. All of us have those experiences, and some of us have much more damaging experiences than others, but there comes a time we need to let go of that, and we need to let that go and be able to claim the reality of who and what we are. Yes, get over it mm -hmm. and get on with life. And this is a, that's a good thing to remember, to get on with life and to put, us, put behind us the hurts and the problems because we're only 
hurting ourselves and restricting ourselves when we cling to old hurts and cling to all that. And it doesn't mean we'll never mention it to anyone. There's times when we can talk about things as, a, as an example for people. But it just means that we don't put energy into the old hurts and the old problems. And we make and life is so much more gloriously beautiful and lovely and wonderful when we're able to do that. And when we've gone through a, a low time and then come out of it, we wonder, why didn't we do this more, more, more quickly? But that's life. That's life. That's life when we learn from our experiences, and our experiences can all be positive and affirmative if we choose to allow them to be. We'd like to pause at this point in the program uh, and offer you the opportunity to receive some literature so that you can study the concepts and ideas that we're sharing with you. to offer you the opportunity to receive one of these free booklets to further your understanding of the new thought message of confident living. Each month we will feature a different booklet which will be mailed to you free and postage paid. Simply address your request to Confident Living at P.O. Box 7726, Long Beach, California, 90807. Before the break, we were talking about the need to let go of things, and we do need to let go, don't we, of, uh, of negative experiences and, and positive experiences as well. And in order to access this power and this presence, we do need to let go, don't we? Yes, and um, when you said oh, old experiences and, and good experiences, I can remember a couple who were my, who my husband's my close friends, and they always talked about their college years, and the college years was way past them. They were grandparents by this time, and yet they were still talking about college. And it's really sad when people get in a rut like that, and they just, their happiest moments are long past. And they don't, and I think they block, people who do that block themselves, and they don't really fully enjoy as they might, if they didn't uh, have their mind, their consciousness on the past, uh, things that happen in the present time. Mm -hmm. So we need to keep our consciousness in present time and be grateful that we've had wonderful experiences in the past, but live in the now. Right, and not stay in those uh, in those good experiences of the past because mm -hmm. it does stop us. It stops mm -hmm. us from growing. It stops us from living. It stops us from the joy that we can have in life. And mm -hmm. so many people will associate, uh, uh, I, uh, just as your husband and his friend, uh, college years or or uh, past times, uh, past holidays, mm -hmm. and and past experiences. And you know, uh, the good old days. Uh, <laughs> the good old days weren't. So good That's and right. you know when you look back upon them and, and a, the wonderful thing about consciousness is that we do tend to remember the good by nature we are empowered to remember the good mm -hmm. and typically we will remember the good but many people do dwell upon the negative aspects of life but we also have a tendency to make the good seem even better <laughs> uh, and and to make it seem even better so that we can justify not being happy and yeah. so we can justify not dealing with where who and where we are so many people that we've dealt with in counseling work will talk about when when we had more money or when we had the house or when we had this or when we had the children at home and so they live at those points. So when I had the job with X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. and the, those memories are wonderful to have, but they also create an opportunity for us not to have to achieve very much and not to have to be very responsible for our lives in the now and in the present moment. And of course, we do need to live in the now. We need to stay in the present moment. Mm -hmm. We need to find joy and happiness in the present moment. And we need to know that the wonderful things that have happened in the past and the difficult things that have happened in the past are in the past. And we, we need to let go of them. And the present is so much better than the past. <laughs> and, uh, and whether it seems so or not, it absolutely is. And the present moment can always be the most wonderful place where where we are because it is where life has brought us and it's where we need to be. And I think sometimes when people live in the past and they glorify the past over much, it's because they don't want to take responsibility for the present time mm -hmm. because we have to be responsible for each day and each week and each month and each year. And as we do accept that responsibility, then uh, there's something to be done. Mm -hmm. Where If they just live in the past, then they're just... Uh, glorifying, over glorifying. I can remember my dad saying when he was 90 years old, don't let anyone tell you that the good old days are in the past. He says, we are living in the good old days. Mm -hmm. And that was, and he, his life spanned a lot of years. And so like he was born in the, in the past 
two centuries ago now. <laughs> but uh, And this is what so many people who are wise see that we need to to just be grateful for the present time and as we as we express gratitude and as we're grateful for whatever happens now then we grow and we propel ourselves forward to a better future, don't we? We do, and we access that one source again. Yeah. We come back to that one presence and we, we acknowledge that one power in our lives. And because of that truth, every moment is a good moment. Mm -hmm. And every now is a magnificent place to be. And so we can live with the wonderful memories of the past, we can live with great expectations for the future, but we can live with great joy and thanksgiving in the midst of where we are right here and right now. Mm -hmm. And when we do, then we are serene, happy, peaceful, and pleasant for other people to be around. And we add to the lives of others without interfering in other people's lives, but we just add by our presence or a word here and there. And, and that's what makes life richly rewarding. When we have enough people around us to be like that, then we can help lift those who are not so fortunate and who are uh, wallowing in negativity. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it all works for the good, doesn't it? All things work for the good. It does. And we need, you touched upon a very important point, we do need to allow people to experience what they need to experience. Mm -hmm. And that's hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. We need to do it with our children. We need to do it with <laughs> our loved ones. And people need to go through what they need to go through. Now, we can offer them compassion. We can offer them support. We can offer them help. But sometimes we do that to to an extent that doesn't help them or us. Mm -hmm. So people need to go through what they need to go through. We can walk the way with them, mm -hmm. but they need to walk their walk themselves. And that's really important. It's totally mandatory, isn't it? Because if they don't, then they have to do it again at a different time. And it might not be as easy the next time. Mm -hmm. So we're really doing anyone that we love an injustice if we try to take the burden for them mm -hmm. instead of letting them assume the responsibility and get on with their own life. Mm -hmm. And getting on with life is something, you know, I guess uh, uh, many people don't want to get on with life because, <laughs> uh, because of their insecurities, because of their uh, lack of self-confidence, confidence because of their lack of expectation of good and one of the things that we teach so often is to always expect good mm -hmm. and to always expect abundance and always expect health and always expect all of the positive aspects of life and we can expect those things in the face of up here we can expect health and we, you and I, know people who are radiantly healthy while their bodies are ravaged with diseases yes. because the health that they have comes from an inner, inner reality mm -hmm. of who and what they are. Mm -hmm. And it's true that the physical bodies get sick and things happen to our physical bodies. And sometimes there are spontaneous healings, sometimes there are healings, but sometimes they're not. But whether the body heals or not, the, the inner person, the spiritual reality is never touched by it unless we allow it to be mm -hmm. touched. And what gets touched so often is the mental person. Mm -hmm. And so our minds get touched and then we believe ourselves to be sick and we have a consciousness of sickness. And the same with prosperity. Uh, in the midst of, of limited financial resources, we can see abundance. We can mm -hmm. claim abundance as that one power. That one power provides us and promises us that our, our needs will be met. But we have to believe that our needs will be met in order to be co-creators with the process mm -hmm. and to allow that empty checkbook to be filled. Now, there are those, <clears throat> excuse me, who would think that if you get down on your knees and pray to God that God's going to bring the money. <laughs> And of course, there are a lot of te people teaching prosperity, teaching in new thought that's akin to that as well. But what we say is that, that if we open ourselves to that presence and power, we'll be guided and directed in what we need to do. And what you may need to do is get another job. <laughs> what you may need to do is get a job. And uh, so our prosperity comes from our consciousness, but it comes from our consciousness uniting with the higher self, with that one source, and then allowing that source to guide and direct our hearts and minds to move us to do the things that we need to do. It's not a process of sitting here and waiting for life to come to us. It's a process of our knowing what to do and then get up and be busy about it. And then life becomes more f fulfilling. Yes, and then a positive aspect of being, a positive consciousness adds um, an essential ingredient there. And so when we do, when we are positive, then it's more, we're more, we're, we praise God more fully. Mm -hmm. We express gratitude. We express gratitude for the abundance that's always there that we have but to claim it.
And so as we do that, it really works because that's the laws of God and laws of nature. It's not our laws, it's the laws of God and the laws of nature, isn't it? It is. And so abundant supply, radiant health, uh, strength and joy and happiness and knowledge and awareness, all of the, the positive aspects of life are, are always available to us. But we really have to create them through our way of thinking, but we're not really creating them. What we're really doing is creating our connection with mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. because they're always there. And, uh, you know, when you look at abundance, just as you said, there's plenty of, of abundance, there's plenty of prosperity in the world. It's, th it's that we don't have what we, what we need at that present moment because of something that's happening within us. Mm -hmm. And the same with health. And again, we're not talking about the fact that if someone is unhealthy or if they have a disease, that they have necessarily done something. But we do know that we can claim the health in the midst of where we are, even if the appearance is that we're not healthy. Yeah. And we can do that more fully if we express gratitude, to express our gratitude and, and have the attitude of expectation uh, and of knowing that, that all our needs will be met. And then, and then doing something, not just sitting there, but doing something. I know I see some people disdain a penny when it's lying on the ground, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't pick it up for anything because they think it's beneath them. But I think we need to pick up those pennies and say, thank you, God, because it's symbolic. Mm -hmm. It's symbolic. And so as we pick up the penny and say, thank you, God, we're opening ourselves to greater abundance. And that might seem like a very mundane example, but it's not mundane. It's really important. Very important. It's very, it's very important because it goes to the very heart of what we're talking about. And what we're yeah. talking about is consciousness yeah. and, and the expectation of, con of our consciousness mm -hmm. to receive from the universe the great and abundant supply of all of our needs. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when, when you said that, it reminded me again of my little grandson. When he wants something that, he's, um, that he wants to take, take something, he holds his hand like this. Instead of grabbing it, something like this, mm -hmm. he holds his hand like this, like he's expecting a gift. Mm -hmm. And isn't that isn't that precious that children are so open? Children are such a part of Creator God, and without having been marred yet by humankind, mm -hmm. and so they're just it's everything is a gift. They're just have their hands there waiting for that gift, and we can be the same in our adulthood. We can be know that God is good, know that God is, is giving, granting every need, and but we block it ourselves. We block our good. Yeah. We block the guidance and direction that we yeah. can have. We block our abundance. We block all of the blessings that we could have in life through our way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And if we can just align our mind with divine mind, and if we can claim the one presence and the one power and know that it is one solution, <laughs> then our lives will be wonderful and positive experiences and we'll be able to deal with every circumstance and situation. And we hope that the information we have been sharing with you has been useful and we look forward to seeing you next time. My husband Iris would like to extend a cordial invitation for you to join them this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for our weekly celebration service at the beautiful Seaport Marina Hotel at the corner of Pacific Coast Highway and 2nd Street, adjacent to the Marina Pacifica and Marketplace Shopping Centers. There will be a guided meditation, prayers, spirited music, and a dynamic, life-changing new thought message. Please join us this Sunday. You will be warmly welcomed into the company of like-minded, positive, and uplifting people. And remember, whatever your dream, whatever your vision, you can attain it through confident living.